Today, we're going to be working on a problem that involves diffusion. So the problem is as follows. Methylene blue is a dye that's widely used in a variety of fields. It has a molar mass of about 320 grams per mole and an approximate radius of one nanometer. If a drop of it is injected into water at room temperature, that's to say 27 degrees Celsius, how far would you expect it to diffuse on average in two minutes? And so what we're going to be looking for here is the RMS distance. So it's R RMS. And so what we know from our expression uh, for diffusion is that in the 3D case, which this is, R RMS is six times the diffusion constant times, or the diffusion coefficient times the time. So after two minutes or 120 seconds, how far has this gone? So the thing that we don't know here is the diffusion coefficient. So we're going to have to go ahead and calculate it using all of the, the properties that we've talked about here. So what is that diffusion coefficient anyway? If you recall from the textbook, the diffusion coefficient is just defined to be one half times the mean free path times the RMS velocity of the particles. And so what we, we don't have either of those things from the information that I've given you so far, so what we need to do is calculate them. And so we'll calculate them each in turn. So the mean free path, DMFP, if you recall, is going to be RT, where R is that ideal gas constant, divided by Avogadro's number, N sub A, the pressure, times pi, times 2R, quantity squared. And so what we can do is plug in all of the information that we know about our object. Uh, and so what we know is that R is 8.3 joules per mole times Kelvin. We know that the temperature is 27 Celsius, but what we actually have to do is use 300 Kelvin because we want Kelvin, not Celsius. We'll get uh, the wrong number. N sub A is Avogadro's number, P is pressure, and it's going to be approximately 10 to the 5 pascals. And then, finally, you need the radius. And the radius for our object um, was given to you, and it's 1 nanometer, or 10 to the minus 9 meters. So, if we go ahead and plug all of this in to this equation up here, what we see is that the distance for the mean free path that we get is going to be something like 3.29 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or 3.29 nanometers, which is not very far at all. So you go, so remember, uh, the definition of the mean free path is the mean distance that your, the quantity in question, or the thing in question goes before it has a collision. So one methylene blue dye molecule is going to go about 3.3 nanometers, between collisions. So now we have to calculate the RMS velocity. And RMS just really means the mean velocity or the mean speed of gas in the atom. And so what we're going to do is use the expression that we calculated from the ideal gas law. And we see that for one molecule, three halves kBT, which is the energy per molecule approximately, is going to be equal to one half m V RMS quantity squared. And what this allows us to do is to say V RMS, and this is just rearranging my terms, is going to be 3 kBT over M, and kB is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature, and M is the mass, and this is all to the one half power. And so we have to calculate a couple of numbers. And specifically, we need to calculate uh, the mass because we know Kb is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature. And so the mass is, well, first off, we know that the, the, um, the molar mass is 319.85 grams per mole. And so that means that this thing weighs approximately 320 AMU, atomic mass units. And since one AMU, is the mass of a proton roughly. That's 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 grams. That means that 
our total mass is going to be awfully small and in fact is going to be 5.31 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. And so now that we know all that, we plug in and we find that V RMS is just going to be equal to 152.9 meters per second. There we go. So now we have the RMS velocity. And now that we've calculated the mean free path and the RMS velocity, we can go back and calculate the diffusion coefficient. And recall that that diffusion coefficient is one half times the mean free path times the RMS velocity. And so taking the numbers that we've got, we just got, that's one half times 3.29 nanometers or 3.29 times 10 to the minus 9 meters times the RMS velocity, which is 152.9 meters per second, we get an expression for our mean free path, or I'm sorry, we get a number for our mean free path that's 2.517 times 10 to the minus 7 meters squared per second. And so that's what we need to get going. And so there's my diffusion coefficient. And so what I do is go back to what I showed you right at the beginning of this video and say that the RMS distance, so R RMS, is just equal to the square root of 6 times the diffusion coefficient times time. And so we use this expression uh, for the mean free distance as opposed to, you know, R RMS instead of X RMS because the die can move in all three dimensions, or so we're assuming. And so at T equals 120 seconds, we plug all our numbers in, and R RMS is just equal to, it's going to be 6 times the diffusion coefficient times 120 seconds all to the square root. And when we do that, we find that it's 0 0.0135 meters, or 1.35 centimeters, which is very small. And so uh, that number is relatively small. And if you've ever dumped dye into water, you might notice that it probably diffuses faster than that. And that's true. And so the reason for that is that here we are only considering diffusion. So we're only considering molecular motion at the atomic level, so molecules bouncing around and whacking into each other and propagating around because of that. Now, when we actually put a drop of liquid into a jar, like I showed you right in those pictures right at the beginning of this video, what happens is that there's not just uh, thermal motion, there's also bulk motion. So in other words, there's not just diffusion going on, there's also little currents flowing around because methylene blue has a density that's not the same as water, so it's going to, you know, it's somewhat denser, so it's going to fall through the water, and so on and so forth. And so um, the number that we get here, 0 0.0135 uh, meters, is actually going to be smaller than what you would see in real life, but in real life it's because there's some motion in addition to just diffusion going on. Thank you very much. Have a good day.